Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity and privilege to come together in fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege, Lord, to worship where we have the freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we acknowledge you, Lord, as Savior, Messiah, and Lord. And being that we acknowledge you, Lord, we give you the freedom and dominion to have your way in this service. Yes. Lord, I'm just asking, Lord, for your word to provoke someone to good works. Yes. And let that be good works to be saved. Yes. Lord, I'm asking, Lord, for your word to be confirmed by signs and wonder. Lord, I'm asking for a fresh anointing, a rhema word. Lord, a word, Lord, that would change lives, change eternal destinations. Lord, and empower your people. In such a way, Lord, that we know it had to be you that did this. Lord, allow no flesh to glory in your sight. Lord, but may you be lifted up. And when you are lifted up, you will draw all men. Lord, we thank you tonight in advance for what's going to happen in this service. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Everyone say amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, give me a hand. I'd like to take care of a couple of administrative things. Um, you know, certainly the children are going to church, children's church. We thank God for uh, Missionary Terry back there, our, our youth leader. Thank God for her and uh, those who serve alongside her and do such a magnificent job. And the team ministry is uh, going to sit in with us tonight. Uh, unique, uh, Elder Unique, our team pastor, did a phenomenal job last night. Yes. You weren't here last night. You missed probably one of the highlight services of this church. Yeah. Yes. Oh man, it was powerful. The seven last words of Jesus. Uh, I mean, we had Deacon Street. Uh, we had uh, Deaconess Addie Rudd. Yeah. Elder John Boy Harris. We had uh, Minister Abraham. We had yeah. Pastor Gib Jones. Yeah. We had um, Luke. Yeah. And Elder Unique. Just give it up for them, man. I mean, God, we have done my money back tonight. We had a blessed time. God was glorified in it. And as, before I get into this word, I'd like to just take care of a couple of uh, things. And, you know, it's always, you know, a privilege to, to serve in a church where, uh, where we have so, so many gifts and talents that come together to serve the Lord. Yeah. And freely give a, of their best. And, um... We have a gentleman that uh, has truly been a blessing. Uh, he told me one day, uh, about, about six months ago, he said, Pastor, I don't want the deacons to always have to clean up everything. <laughs> he said, I want them, you know, they, they, they can help, but, but I, I have the opportunity where I can give back and help. Um, and I like to just clean up and take care of those things in the church. So tonight, I'd like to formally uh, recognize and present a certificate to a point uh, Brother Anthony Walter, some know as Cool Whip, Red Whip, at the Every Church, Church Sexton. And his wife, Harry, come on up here, Stand right by his side, and let's him come up. But I would like to formally recognize him and honor him and and he is such a blessing to our church. Amen. It's an honor to serve as your pastor. And I just want to formally uh, present this certificate to you to make it a formal appointment as our church section. Amen. 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 It's always nice to be nice. Yes. And when we have people as blessed as we have them in this church, I mean, you know, he he is willingly has served him. Um, I also would like to talk about giving for a second. Is that a couple weeks ago I was left an offering envelope on my desk that was really moved my heart, and it was by a young man named Gustavo. They get a right, Gustavo. It's the little things in life that get you. But in this offering envelope, he had his name and he had a picture of himself. 
<laughs> and with the cross. And see, some wouldn't get it. But he's saying, I don't have any money, but I give me. I give my best. Gustavo, come on, Rick Gustavo. Oh, he's back there. Yeah, please get Gustavo for a second. And you know, because you got to understand, when our children are trained the right way, we ain't going to worry about other stuff happening down the road. We know they're in God's care. You know, but, you know, when I've, I, I think the street will test it. I've had this thing on my desk about three weeks, I think. I said, man, this thing. And, I, and I'm not going to show you the, ca the card he, he, he wrote, you know. It's in my desk. It's for me. Smeared blood all over them just so they could hide. 
Last month over in Libya, we had 21 Christian men who were marching on the beaches of Libya. And they were beheaded on TV because of their commitment and faith to Jesus Christ. But the truth is, it says that ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Taliban recognize something that many Christians do not. They recognize the power of the cross. Yeah. That's right. They recognize the power of the resurrected Jesus Christ. They cannot get at Jesus. But they're trying to get the believer. They're trying to take your faith. But the truth is, they already know something that many of us have forgotten. They know that there's a threat if you can prove and show everyone about the resurrected Jesus Christ. Yes. That's the truth. In this day and time, this day and time, the, the reality is that many of us Christians have become so, uh, our messages have become so diluted and so watered down that there's no power or efficacy uh, behind the message and the gospel. It's because we're talking about everything else yeah. other, yeah. other than the resurrected Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. We want to hear feel-good messages. We want to hear blessings. We want to hear prophecies. We want to hear about healings. But we don't want to talk about the fact that Jesus really rose from the grave. Yeah. We talk about God in a general term. It's cute to talk about those things. I'm a Christian. I love God in a generic sense. But we're afraid to proclaim that Jesus has risen. Yeah. But don't be confused, beloved. The resurrection is real. Yeah. I know some are saying, well, 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 what's the point of being here tonight? The point is, even those who confess Christ don't even really believe that Jesus rose from the dead. As my wife was saying so eloquently, is that we hear about it but we really don't embrace the truth and can explain the truth. That Jesus really defied physiology and biology, that he did raise up from a morbid dead state at, in a condition of three days and was raised from the dead and, and defied what human man says is possible. It really did transpire. But in the day and time that we live in, everyone's so cynical and skeptical of churches. Church religion, church pastors, and, and they talk about, well, your pa uh, pastor played up, and, and they talk about the pastor this, and religion that you can't trust this, and you can't trust that. But I tell you what you can't trust. Hey. It's the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10, will be the beginning. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, yeah. came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see what the sepulchre occurred. I like to say the big rock because it's easier to say. <laughs> <laughs> and behold, there was a great earthquake. I'm going to tell you a funny story for a second. I say that because I make up for the fact that See, I grew up, they, had, they used to have to make fun of me because they used to pull me out of all the classes from second grade all the way to fifth grade because I couldn't speak. Wow. I had to go to speech classes. I got tongue-tied. I got couldn't say R's, couldn't say S's, couldn't could, could, could say T's, and, and I would stutter all the time. But don't you know God will take your... Hey. Limitations yes, yes. and turn it around for his good and his glory. Yes. 
And so I prophesy sometimes I have to think about a word. I'm like, well, I'll just go ahead and just why lie with Trooper do? The rock sounds better. Yeah. That's easy to say. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become, or became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. Someone say he's not here. He's not here. For he is risen. Yes. Can you say that? He is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Yeah. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the big rock with fear and great joy. And did run to bring his disciples word. Yeah. Yeah. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hell. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Yeah. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Yeah. Go tell my brother yeah. that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. Yeah. Yeah. When he say, they shall, they shall see Jesus. See Jesus. See Jesus. Now, that's the gospel story, and if you could look at Matt, the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and they tell the story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In John, in chapter 20, it tells you some of the same story. But we've got to believe the word of God from Genesis to Revelation that it's all true. Yeah. Or it's not. That's right. And so you come here tonight, and you may or may not believe. Or you may be told by some people it's just stories. Or, or some of it's just good to hear, and, and, and it's good information to have. But either all of it is true, That's it. Yeah. <laughs> or none of it is. Yeah. Isaiah, 40th chapter, verse 8. It says, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, the word, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The word of God shall stand forever. And his word is true. His word is right. And my, my propositional statement tonight is that I'd like to tell you that there is more than enough evidence to prove that the resurrection is real. I'm going to give you some evidence as a lawyer to demonstrate and validate and prove to you that Jesus really did rise from the dead. This is not a story. And you have a choice tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Yes, sir. In a gospel story, according to Paul, this is, was written around 55 to 56 AD. Uh, it was Paul, is the author, who's writing to the church of Corinth. Yeah. And he's telling the church and informing them because they were having some reservation of problems because they can handle this God thing. Mm. See, a lot of us, we can handle the God thing. Yeah, that's right. yeah. We can handle Yahweh. We can handle El Elohim. But when we start invoking the name of Jesus, yeah. 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 And people can have a little trepidation. They get a little nervous and they can get a little fearful. And they don't, they don't mind you talking about God because the, the Muslims believe in a God and the Jews believe in a God and other people believe in some amb ambiguity, you know, type of, you know, gray area of God. But when you start invoking the name of Jesus, yeah. people start having reservation. It's not politically correct. And let me tell you, I am not politi politically correct. <laughs> There's power in that name. That's right. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it, you know, and, and as I get ready to read this text, there's many people who try to disprove the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Frank Morrison was a guy that, he was a historian and a scholar. He spent a couple years studying. Uh, with the intent, he, he felt like he had a stack deck. He, any card players, and he thought he had, he thought he had some cards. He thought he, he had a full set right there. He thought he had this thing won. 
he was going to write a book on who moved that stone. And he was going to show you and prove to everyone how uh, someone else moved the stone. He had this thing figured out. But after two years of evidence and, 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 and looking at this thing, he was not a believer. He was an atheist. He, he, he spent two years of his life studying with everything he could get his hands on. He had all types of resources at his disposal. After two years, he sat there in his study. And all of a sudden, Nick, the light switch came on. He said, I know who moved this stone. It was Jesus. Jesus really did rise up from the dead. There's no other explanation over all the things that have happened. I tried to disprove everything. But I cannot deny the existence of who Jesus really is. But tonight in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul was dealing with this thing because the church, they not only were they talking about the resurrection of Jesus, but they were having a problem because when you read the text in the 15th chapter, and, and or we come to understand the Bible, is that once you really dig in and, and, and you start pulling uh, golden nuggets out and you have those uh, eureka moments, what happens is you realize that when we... When, when it happens, the trumpet blows and, and a twinkle of an eye, or if we die and then we're, we're caught up, what, what's going to happen is our bodies are going to be trans, transformed from our broken bodies and being made into a flesh fuel, perfect body. Yeah. But it's the same body, but it's no longer broken. It's made whole. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And so they were having problems wrapping their, their mind around this. And so they were arguing among themselves, and they were trying to figure this thing out. But Paul, he realized he needed, he needed to bring truth. And he needed to show them, and he needed to do it in a scholarly manner, in a way that, that there was no doubt of what, about what happened with Jesus and what's going to happen to us when we die. If we, if we are a believer. Yeah. If we are a believer. And, and, and so the doubt they were having is the same problem we have right now. The whole world around us, and even churches, are trying to get away from telling you about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you flip on TBN or the Word Network or, or, or these channels, most of the information you will listen to will always take you back to send in some money. Get your anointing oil. Let us send you some packages, some DVDs, and some CDs. And rarely are they talking about a resurrected Jesus. So the same problem they were having then, they're having now. But Paul, he realized he needed to deal with this man. And so he started pulling all this information together and he realized that he needed to present in a way that they could receive it because they had became too smart for their own good. Yeah. Like us, we become too smart for our own good. We read something on Facebook, we read something on the internet, and all of a sudden it's fact. <laughs> I mean, I hear some of the most ridiculous things. People will tell you something, and it, well, I, Pastor, I'm telling you, this, this way that you're wrong, Pastor. <laughs> Based on Joe Smo, the idiot, put something down on Facebook. You take that as fact over what the Word of God says. You know, but, but Paul, he was dealing with this, but his answer that he was going to present to him is the kind that he was finding like Judge Judy. Presenting something to, to defend someone against an accusation. And the first thing he was doing, he was trying to, the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ proves the resurrection of the human body is possible. The resurrection of Jesus makes the resurrection of the believer an absolute truth. Paul defends what he knows is true by presenting evidence as if he was a defense lawyer. And the first thing that Paul defended or argued for to clear up any confusion was that the gospel which he preached in verse 1 is the gospel of Jesus Christ has the facts that we need as believers to prove that God raised up Lord Jesus from the dead. First, first one says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and where ye, wherein ye, ye stand. 
Paul would argue that God can raise the body that Jesus had possessed on earth, which was mutilated and resurrection to, uh, resurrected to his perfection. He would argue that the very body that was crucified at Calvary, that was bloody, maimed, beaten up, would be raised up in a perfect state. And then we're able to verify and validate through people's witnesses that Jesus wasn't walking around bloodied and maimed and bruised and messed up. And so Paul was doing, he was showing us that if you have cancer, you have leukemia, you die of, of this affliction or that affliction, or if you got blew up by a bomb and your bodies and ashes were all over the place, it does not matter. Your body's going to be brought back together and it made whole. And so your body, you would know what it is and someone else would know your body. And so those who, those who you love, who passed on, you'll get to see again. They will recognize you and, they will, and, they will rec and you'll recognize them. Yeah. And so we're not hopeless because when we say goodbye to someone, really, we're just saying we'll see you later. Yeah. And so I tell you, baby, my wife, it's been a year since your mama tra transitioned. And I know you miss her. But you'll see her in glory one day again. Yeah. And Steve, I tell you the same thing. Your dad, you'll get some answers questions. Or questions to answers to questions. <laughs> but one of the things that really Paul was trying to show us that not only was he uh, that our bodies would be made whole, but he he was also showing that we should defend the faith <laughs> in a way that we're almost aggressive about defending it. Yeah. We shouldn't let people dumb us down and, and, or talk down to us like that what we're standing for is, is, is futile or fruitless but rather Jesus Christ has real power yeah. we let people talk to us and corner us and tell us what Jesus isn't but I know what he is yeah. he's Lord yeah. in this verse in the first verse where he says I declare that, that word declare is norizo which means make known. He was saying, I make known something I've already told you. Yeah. This is the same gospel I told you about before. And see, what this tells me, uh, Pastor Fernando, is so important to see, we get callous and, and we become so san uh, desensitized to the gospel and the truth of the gospel. We no longer, no longer get excited when we start talking about the resurrected Jesus. Oh. <laughs> see, see, if I walked around and said, be healed in Jesus' name. Be blessed. That people are falling out excited. <laughs> but when I say Jesus has risen, yes, yeah. 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 that's real power. Yes, that has real meaning. Yeah. It has substance. Yes, it it's everything. Yes, it it's the cornerstone of our faith. It's the foundation. It's the capstone. Everything else is, is really just a byproduct. The yeah. only thing that really matters is whether you're saved or not saved. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're following along with me saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but he was speaking to the church because it's a basic fundamental teaching. But the truth is, yeah. the truth is, the truth is, it's really many of us don't get excited anymore when we even say the name Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Enswinger, uh, Minister Enswinger, see, what happens is, uh, when, when, when sometimes I'm teaching, I say, man, when, when you're in a pickle and, and you're struggling and some stuff's not going right in your life, man, all you got to do sometimes is pull over the side of the road and just start saying the name Jesus. Yeah. 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 And we start saying the name Jesus, peace comes in the room. Yeah. We start saying Jesus when you're saying power comes in. Yeah. You got struggles in your mind, struggles in your spirit. You start speaking that name. Yeah. Come on now. Uh, but, but you know, when, when, when you, if I was going to say, man, if everyone comes tonight, man, and, and I'll give you an egg, and, and in there's a million dollars, you'd be excited. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm talking about eternal life. Yeah. 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 Walking on the streets of gold. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he was declaring. And then in verse 2, he, he said, By which also you are saying, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Yeah. Memory is, I kateshe, means, uh, in Greek, means to hold on to. Amen. 
We got to hold on to that truth. Yes. When we get a little despondent and a little overwhelmed, we feel like falling back into the same stuff again. We feel like using again. We feel like uh, uh, feeling sorry for ourselves. We feel like giving in and we're overwhelmed. We got to hold on to this truth that Jesus has risen again. Yes. And because he rose, there's so many other benefits to a believer, but we walk and live below our privilege because we don't understand that real truth that Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. A person who accepts Jesus Christ as Lord, and you remember, you remember when you got saved, don't you? Yes. You remember that moment where peace came over you. Yes. Like, Hallelujah. Yes. You remember when you felt like putting a bullet in your head. You you remember when you think about hanging yourself or taking some pills. You remember you felt like driving off the road. You remember when you felt like giving up on life. You remember that moment. And all of a sudden, you said, with Jesus as Lord, and everything changed. The landscape changed. Your mind changed. Your spirit changed. And you were encouraged like no other day. Don't you remember that moment? Yeah. Oh, God. That's what Paul was saying. You got to tap back into that memory bank and go back into that. Say, I remember, God, how you saved me. I remember. I remember when I felt like checking out. I remember when I was overwhelmed with my children's problems and this person's problems. I remember when I, I felt like I couldn't pay my bills. And I remember when I didn't see a way out of this. But don't you know God always made a way because if He can overcome the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But the reality is. That some will leave here tonight. And you will walk right out of here and go back into the same crap, the same stuff, the same hole, the same mud, the same pit. Because you don't understand that Jesus is the only way to the Father. And Paul, he was presenting his case as a lawyer. And he, and he says right here that, that in verse 3, 4, I... Delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Yeah. How that Christ died for our sins. Yeah. According to scriptures. Our is hooper. It means for our benefit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ died for not his sins. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. He was sinless. That's right. He died for what? Our, our sins. sins. Or, and, and make a person say, my, my sins. sins. That's right. And I can hear, you know, Paul being sarcastic, like, first of all, don't you get this? He did, he he was perfect. First of all. And he died for our sins. Yeah. <laughs> I can just hear him, like, you know, can't y'all get this? <laughs> he overcame the grave. Yes. <laughs> he was crucified on our behalf. Yeah. He was the atonement. The propitiation. He was the sacrifice, the perfect yeah. one, anointed one for us. Yes. Thank you. Who was sinless, sent by the Father. Yes. And he died for what? Our yes. sins. Yes. And he was, and Paul was not preaching about a gospel he just heard. Like I heard from someone, or I read it on Facebook, or I, someone Googled it and it came up. And, no, but he was, this was a man on the Damascus Road experience. His name was Saul. Yeah. He persecuted and murdered Christians. Yes. He was the worst of the worst, chasing down as a zealot against Christianity. Yeah. And then one day on Damascus Road, he was struck down. He was blind, but now he could see. Yeah. He was speaking from personal experience, not just facts. Sometimes information is cool, but a testimony is much better. You can tell someone some information, but when you can make it personal, yes. what Jesus has done for you and I, yes. glory to God. He had a personal encounter with the Christos. When people ask me, how, 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 how did this happen in your life? Or how did this good thing happen? And how did that good thing happen? The only thing I can say yes. is Jesus. 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 Jesus sent my wife, gave me my children, Gave me a right mind, yes. set me free, yes. delivered me, yes. blessed me, yes. 
And guess what? Here's the key. I was undeserving of all that. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But he used the words for our sins. And then, and then pre Paul was here was preaching the unadulterated gospel. He was determined to preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He said earlier in 1 Corinthians 2 and 2, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yeah. Don't tell me about your dogma and your doctrine. But tell me about a crucified Jesus. Yeah. For in Christ I live and Christ I die. Yes, yeah, sir. All the other stuff is just stuff. But tell me about what's His name. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the next piece of evidence that Paul presented in this case was that Jesus was buried and rose from the grave. Yeah. It said in verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The grave was empty, but they saw him get placed in there. God loved you and I that he knew we would need a Messiah, a Savior, a Savior. And he verified and validated that, that he would do exactly what he said he would do. Yeah. And the tomb is empty. Yeah. I'll tell you over and over, the Jews and the Romans, the Muslims, and maybe even the Buddhists, they still looking and digging up sand out in the Middle East looking for his remains. Yeah. <laughs> but they ain't going to find Jesus' carcass. No. They ain't going to find the skeletons of bones of Jesus. Because he's not in the grave. Christ. Yeah, yeah. In the most critical moment of history, 
You know that's the most pivotal time in history? Amen. When Jesus was going to the cross? Amen. Peter denied him not once, twice, or three times a lady. Yeah. And ran for the border. <laughs> and yet, Jesus shows us once again, even after he had died and rose again, that he allowed Peter to see him. Showing that you're never beyond redemption. That's right. Showing that even when you fall down, you can get back up. That's right. It's never too late to be used by God. And even when you mess up, God can still use a messed up, flawed individual like me and you. Peter would be the one who would help be the leader of the church. And then reason in the book of Acts, they would turn the world upside down. And then it says the 12 apostles would see him. And then, and then, then we find that James would see him hit. Jesus' own half-brother. Yeah. And why? They're, we're painting the picture that now, check this out. Now we're verifying through a family member, yeah. through disciples, yeah. and other witnesses that this really was the same Jesus who went to Calvary. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on. We didn't have uh, someone on a computer or iPad to show you a picture. That's right. That's right. And we didn't have no picture ID. But I can tell you through family members and friends and other apostles who went with, who went with him for three years. Yeah. And this is the very Jesus who went to Calvary and died. And he rose and we got to see him in his resurrected state. Yeah. Oh, glory. Thank you, That'll get you excited. Yeah. 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 And the Romans didn't want this to happen. The Jewish didn't want this to happen. And, and those who try to say it was a swoon theory that he passed out from the pain. And, and they know it. You can't be in that much pain. They wrap you up like a mummy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. After you've been uh, wounded and, and, and maimed like that. And, and some try to say well, the, the Jews or the Romans took the body or friends took the body. But here we are. Friends and family saw Jesus in this resurrected right. state. Right. And then Paul, it says the least of them. The least of the apostles, the last, the one who persecuted Christians, would see Jesus. Come on. And he said, uh, they talk about the grace of God. And, and Paul making, uh, uh, mentioned that Jesus made another resurrection to the other 12 apostles in Luke 24, 33 through 36, and John 20 through 19. But here we see Paul painting a picture. That Jesus really did res get resurrected from the dead. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to let that settle for a second. Because the truth is, many of us really don't really embrace that. It goes like this. But don't you know our Jesus really did get up from that tomb? Yes. Without CPR, hey. without modern medicine, yeah, yeah, yeah. without one of the machines, who? <laughs> but he got up on his own. That's right. God the Father raised him from the dead. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Paul, he, we see here in verse 10 where he labors. He said, but by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they, than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. It says labor. That word labor is kapeo, meaning to, to, he labored to the point of exhaustion. Paul, who saw Jesus, who had this Damascus Road experience, believed so much of what he saw. That he labored to the point of exhaustion all the time. Yeah. Yeah. He believed so much in the gospel and believed so much in the resurrection yeah. that there was no doubt in his mind really what went on. And, then, and then, then we look at the apostles who were willing to die. Peter would be, would, would, would be crucified upside down and say, I can't even be crucified the way Jesus was. Just hang me upside down. Yeah. And never recanted his faith. But rather, 30 years later, said, yeah, I know that Jesus really get, did raise up from the dead. Yeah. They were put in Colosseums. Lions ate them. They were devoured. They would stretch their bodies. They would maim them, behead them, put them in stakes, impale them. Yeah. Yeah. And not one of them is a recorded history that they recanted their faith. Oh, wow. But us in America, we think we're persecuted when someone takes our Happy Meal. Yeah. 
I am convicted. 
And that Jesus has risen from the dead. Two-part altar call. One, if you do not know Jesus Christ in the part of your sins, you do not know with absolute assurance that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to give you this opportunity right now to come running up right now and say, I've heard the evidence and I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord. It's not hard. In fact, it's so easy, it'll blow your mind. Yeah. We'll open up the altar right now. You can come to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and your life will never be the same. Yeah. Your ticket will be punched. <laughs> Destination heaven. Yeah. Part two of the altar call. If you have been walking and living below your privilege, not operating in the power of the cross, understand if you really believe who Jesus really is and his scripture for what it is, because if these scriptures are true, which we know they are, every other benefit that's in the word of God is available to you. You have no reason to walk, or walk around in oppression, Depression, Amen. affliction, Amen. sickness, yeah. poverty, yeah. hopelessness, yeah. chaos. You have, there's no reason for you to stay in your current condition. Yeah. But right now, I would like to pray with you. Come up here right now. We want to pray with you. If you've been living below your privilege. Because it is a privilege. Hallelujah. Come on, you need to come. You want to come to the altar? I'll pray with you. But if you've been living below your privilege, I understand the power we have in Jesus Christ. Someone say the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. I lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, let's start praying. Let's start thanking Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you even right now. There's no reason for any of us to leave here tonight. Going home fussing and complaining, being a malcontent, being upset, because you have a resurrected power. If Jesus overcame the tomb, which he did, that's Romans 8 says that the same power, the same spirit that was in Jesus, the same spirit that resurrected him, is in each of us as a believer. Hallelujah. That ought to excite someone right now. That same power, that same spirit. Hallelujah. And none of us are beyond redemption. And none of us are beyond a second chance and another chance. And so if you felt like you fell away, you felt like you messed up, you felt like... Uh, things are just not operating the way you thought they should and, and maybe you fell down maybe you made some mistakes and you want to start again Jesus used Peter he can use you and I too so come right now we want to pray with you right now hallelujah
You know, like baseball, they have power hitters. Every one of you is a power hitter. But you don't realize that you have power in you. Well, you said there's power in me. They can work your muscles. There's power in me. Jesus power. In Acts 1, they said it's dunamis, a Holy Ghost power. When you when receive the Holy Ghost, you receive, shall receive power. Dunamis, boom, explosive TNT power. So each of us has dynamite power on the inside. But unless you unpack it and use it, no one will ever know that you're a power-packed believer. You've got power in you. And his name is what? Jesus. Come on, watch his name. Jesus. Come on, watch his name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to finish with one more song. You don't mind? It's Resurrection Weekend. Yeah. Whatever else is going on, I hope you wouldn't put it before Jesus tonight. Oh, That's right. <laughs> you got a hallelujah? Yeah. I think Gabby, come on up here. Monique, come on up here. Come on up, help me out. Jesus. And we let your 
Jesus here. We gonna find him no too. And he's at the right hand of the Father. Because he is risen. We are victorious. We are not the tail, but we are what? We are not the losers. We are the We are not the victim. We are victorious. And so tonight, I want you, when you leave here tonight, to have a smile on your face, a pep to your step, your head up and understand that you're a child of the Most High God. Understand you are victorious in Christ. You are not the loser, but you are the winner because Jesus paid it off. Hallelujah. Glory to the Son of God. So tonight, why don't you tell your neighbor to your left or your right and tell him, I am a winner. Because Jesus paid it all. And he is alive. Hallelujah. 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 And it's dear and dear to my heart, Brother Josh. Brother Josh, who closes out with a benedictional prayer. He's a mighty, mighty man.